Kum Lenin, Ablat Gemara. We are up to the Tzadik Dalad Amit Aleph. And uh, we're in the middle of the Sugi. We're having two versions here regarding Rav Shesh. Uh, Rav Shesh was asked if a single aid can be believed regarding a Yavama, that you can marry a Yavama. Because we learned before that a single aid is believed to tell a woman that her husband died and she's free. What about to um, to marry Yavama? So we had two versions. And... Um, <clears throat> And the question really was, why do we believe a single aid? Is it because he knows he can be caught out, so therefore the, he has credibility because the, he says the person is dead and then suddenly tomorrow the person appears? Is that the reason why? Or is it because we assume the woman will do her thorough homework? But when it comes to Yavamba, she might not do thorough homework because maybe she doesn't like her, her Yavamba brother-in-law and therefore she's going to be happy to rely on a single witness without doing any, any cross-checking or anything else. <clears throat> Then we had another version that said, surely a single aid is believed because uh, even she believed that she comes along and says, my husband died, she could marry a brother-in-law. Um, the question is, it, can we believe her regarding saying that that, um, that, that she, uh, her brother-in-law died so therefore she can go marry anybody you want? Yeah. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> not talking about her husband, talking about her brother-in-law to say that um, her brother-in-law died and therefore she's a free woman. So do we believe, do we say yes? Adech would believe. Do we say no? Maybe she doesn't like her brother-in-law, and that's why she's saying that uh, he's dead. Well, that's why he's saying she's dead, and therefore she trusts him. So we're up to that, and um, we're up to Amalei Rav Martha. We try to bring a proof from the Mishnah, and we just discounted that. We said the Mishnah is talking about there were two people who came along and said, uh, you know, regarding a, a Yavam, not there was only a single aid. And why, if two against two, do we tell her we have to, we believe the second group? Because the second group were Mazimin. They came along and said to the first group, you weren't even there at the time. Okay, up to Amalei Amarchai Leravashi. Amarchai said to Ravashi, but Amalei other said, Amarchai said to Ravashi, Toshma, come in here. It says, Ain ha'isha ne'emenes le'emera, a woman, we'll learn later on, a woman is not believed to say, Mace Yivami, my brother-in-law died. She'en nasei, so therefore now I'm a free person, I can marry anybody I want. She, a woman is not believed to say that. And nor can a woman say, my sister died, and therefore I can marry her husband, because you're allowed to marry um, your wife's sister, provided your wife is no longer <clears throat> in this world. So it says clearly that she's not believed, as if to say, he need she's not believed, but her aid echad mehemen. But a single aid who is more objective, because she might have a vested interest in it, but a, a, a single aid objective is believed. So we see clearly from here, that a single witness is believed to say that my brother, that your brother-in-law is dead, and therefore now you're a free woman. Says the Gemara, that's your whole basis. Well, time may, if you want to be so particular in the words of the Mishnah, let's continue the Mishnah. It says there further, Amos, look at the end. It says there, Ein ha'ish neman, a person, a man, is not believed to say, Mace, achi, my brother died, so therefore I can marry his wife. A person is not believed to say that I can marry my brother's wife. Obviously, because he's in a gay bedover, he benefits. Well, they may say each day a person that believes my wife died in order that I can marry a sister. She says I can marry a sister. And if you want to be particular, so you'll say, who need Lamehman? He's not believed. Ha eight echud, but a single witness will be believed. Now, <clears throat> and what's wrong with that? Because you know why a single witness is believed when it comes to a woman? We don't want it to be a guna. A woman can only marry one man, and therefore she would want to be stuck. So if one witness comes along and makes her life easier, we're going to trust that single witness to make it easier for her. We're still trying to work out whether um, an aid is believed to say to a woman that your brother-in-law is dead and therefore you are free. Because the whole reason why we believe in aid echad is because she'll do her homework. Here, maybe she won't do her homework properly. Maybe she's happy to be free. And she will not do her homework properly. So therefore, <clears throat> that's the question. So we're trying to bring a proof one way or another. And the Mordechai is trying to bring a proof from the fact that the Mishnah says that she's not believed, but a single witness is believed. So then we say well, that's the whole basis. It says for the Mishnah that a man is not believed, as if a single witness is believed to help a man. And there's no reason for it. Why do we have a single witness helping a woman? We don't want it to be chained. We don't want it to be tied up. So make it as easy as possible. By a man, he can marry anybody, even if he's married. He can marry a second wife, according to the title. So therefore, why should we blame it all? Actually, there's a big shock of Italia today when we don't have, we're not allowed to marry more than one wife. If today, a single witness would help a man as well, or just by a woman. So 
So what do we need? Uh, don't be medayik that a woman is, is not believed, but an eidechad is believed. No, there's a chiddush to tell you that even a woman, forget, to tell you that a woman is not believed, even a greater chiddush will tell you that a single age is not believed. Could be a single age is not believed because you won't do a homework. You'd happen to be free. But the reason why we talk about a woman is because there's a bigger chiddush there if you follow Rabbi Kiva. Why? Could Rabbi Kiva, could Rabbi Kiva hold that even if you, let, let's say if she think, if, if she really has to marry a brother or she marries a stranger, Farna, she uh, she's it's a chayv alav. She did an alav, and according to Rabbi Kiva, the children mums ate him. So you would say, wow, that's enough pressure that she will do, definitely do her homework because she wants to take make sure she doesn't have produce mums ate So we would have thought that is more ground to believe her than a single witness in this case here, according to Rabbi Kiva, because she doesn't want to produce mums ate him. So if she comes along and says I can marry him, probably she can. Because I would have thought, how you Rabbi Kiva said yes, mums are chayv alav. That is a mums from even a love. So if she marries a stranger when she should really be marrying a brother, or she's committing a love, and her children would be o mamzedim. Aim, I would have thought chayshinan al kikula dezara the daiko. She's very worried that maybe chayshad that she is that she's worried about her children's fate, and therefore she will be very careful, particular, and therefore we should be able to trust her. And that's what Misha said. You don't believe her. Why? Because sometimes she hates her brother with such a passion. She doesn't think things through, logically, to this conclusion, and she just wants to get out. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, but I got commercial. <clears throat> but when, uh, when, when it comes to a husband, there's no chiddish at all. So maybe a single witness could be believed, but there's no chiddish by a husband. Okay, Rubber says, so we have no proof one way or another. Rava comes along and says, Eid Echad. Sorry, when it comes to her husband, we say that she is believed with a single aid, or she's believed that her husband died. Because even we don't believe that she hates her husband that much. I mean, she's married to the guy. We don't believe he hates that much, and therefore she'll think things through. And uh, she doesn't want to have, if she says my husband's dying, she'll remarry, she'll marry somebody else. And then she won't be Mamzadim. She won't do that unless she knows 100% her husband is dead. So we trust her when it comes to her husband. We don't trust her when it comes to her brother-in-law because the brother-in-law she's not married to, she has nothing to do with him, and then you're forcing her to marry somebody that not necessarily she wants to. So therefore, we can say that she hates him, and therefore she's happy to get out. When it comes to husband, they've been living together all these years. We don't make that assumption. We assume that most people are happily married. Says the Gemara further. Rabba, Rabba says, I'll tell you what I said. Rabba said, "Aid ech nemem biyavame." I say that a single witness should be believed when he comes along and says your brother-in-law died. Why? Kavuchaymer, kavuchaymer. From the fact that we believe in aid ech, it says your husband died. If her husband, if the aid ech's husband died, it turned out to be that he didn't. That she remarried, or she married somebody else. What happens? She is living in a sin of courage. She's a married woman. So if you believe a single aid when it comes to such a harsh avera like a piece of chorus, surely we should bring an aid when we say that he says you can marry a stranger, which at the end of the day, all it is is a love. It's only an avera. Surely we should believe the single witness. So he said, Lisa Karas, he tarta. When Lisa Karas, you believe the single witness, Lisa Lav, the Koshka. Surely you should believe um, the single witness when Sahakal, what's he testifying that he can that he marry anybody he wants? That's an Lisa of Lav. As the Gemara, Omele, 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 says this, Rabban, Omele, he atzma techiach says as Mohammed Rabban to Rabbi. He atzma techiach. No, what about herself? We can see that that's not a, that's not an argument at all. That this is a chorus, and therefore we believe by chorus should be allowed. Look at herself. The Lisa chorus. He tells she comes along and says, "My husband died." We believe her, right? And Lisa chorus. And yet these are a If she says, "My brother will die," we don't believe her because we think that she wants to get out of him, out of his clutches. So she makes this up. So she received I I a smaller other. It doesn't matter. We don't believe him. Well, he my time alum them that why she believe keeping the Zimna Sanyale. Why isn't she believed? Because sometimes she hates the brother-in-law and she hears rumors that her brother was dead. For her, she's happy. And she jumps on it and says, Hey, I'm a free woman. Like who means if she won't be careful, she'll marry to eight economics. Even if an eight echa comes along and says your brother-in-law died, and the whole basis for believing a single witness when it comes to a woman is that surely she did her. Her uh, due diligence, and she found out that it's true. But keeping the zim the sandal, sometimes you know you're forcing her to marry somebody she has no intention of marrying. So therefore, it could be that she doesn't like the guy. We're using the word hate. It doesn't have to be hate. I don't like that. You know, when you marry, you marry somebody, there has to be some kind of a chemistry there. She doesn't like the guy. Loidaiko means about she's not careful, and um, and she's happy to marry somebody else. That's why we don't. So we don't believe a single witness when it comes to a yibum. Then the mission can refer to them. Med the George Rabbeloza Masya. This the the following medrash that Rabbeloza the Masya says in the pasuk. 
Um, we're talking about over here um, that if, if they told her her husband died and merely she got engaged to somebody else, then the, then the husband came back, nothing happened. And in fact, even that you don't even need a divorce because you were never engaged to the person in the first place. But if that person gives you a divorce, we say, it says nothing happens, you can still marry a coin. Comes along to the Blessed Master, he says, I have a posse. The posse said that if a woman is divorced, may Isha from her husband. So it says from her husband um, and not from a man who is not really a husband. And you're not considered a husband until you actually consummate the marriage. You have two choices to learn from this Pasik. From Isha, Isha Grusha Isha. And he decided to, to learn from there a smaller Kiddush. So he says an interesting expression. Um, he, he had an opportunity to find over there precious stones, pearls. The daughters, but instead, he, he darshaned with all the of clay shards. You know, he, he found a, a very limited case that this woman who was engaged to a, another person thinking that her husband is dead and turned to be her husband alive, then the divorce doesn't in any way harm her. Now we can learn so much more from it. Time to be learned. I'll tell you what we learned from it. The Isha, Gurusha Misha, woman who divorced from her husband, I feel like this guy, um, even Sulukuna. What happens if the husband says to her, I'm giving you a divorce? But the divorce only says you're no longer married to me, but I'm not permitting you to marry anybody else in the whole world. It's not a coach you get because you're still tied together. However, she can no longer marry a coin because there's a reya chagete. There's a little bit of a get here. How do you know that from this passage? It says the isha grusha isha, even if she's divorced only from her husband, not from the rest of the world. I feel like gosh, isha, only from her husband. She can no longer marry the coin because there's a little bit of a partial get here. And the reich get the place of kuna. This is called the smell of a get that passes by kuna. That's such a much much greater chiddush. That's a diamond compared to what Rabbi Loza the uh, Masia is trying to learn from there. Okay, Mishnah. Mishnah. Somebody's wife went overseas and bow on the loy. Now we now instead of previously we talked about when the husband overseas and they came and told her. Now it's the reverse. That the wife went overseas and they came and told him, and they said to him, "May say ishtcha, your wife died." Your wife died. So what he did was, he married a sister, which is permitted if the wife is dead. But what happened was, now living with your sister-in-law when your wife is alive is an Easter of Karis. And his sister, his wife came back. In this instance, he's allowed to take back his first wife. Remember, a man is allowed to have more than wife, one wife. Now, he didn't have her with this um, woman. He lived with his wife's sister, but has no bearing on his wife. He could take her back. And therefore, the condition that he made to his wife's sister was not effective. So he's allowed to marry all of her relatives. Let's say his wife, let's say um, his, 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 um, his sister-in-law, the one that he lived with, had a daughter from somebody else. He's allowed to marry that girl. And she, the sister-in-law who lived with him in sin, can marry anybody. In other words, they were never married. Nothing happened. What happens? The Mesa... Um, um, Rishon, if eventually his wife does die, Mutishni can even take her back because he was never married to her in sin. They were never married in the first place. What happens? Case number one. Case number two. Amrullah, um, they told him, Mesa Ishta, they told him, your wife died. But not the Chais, and he married his sister. Same case as before. But excuse me, what happened was in this case, not that his wife came back, but they told him, Kayem is Chaisa, your wife was still alive. She was in the hospital in the ICU, but she was still alive when you married her sister. The Mesa, but then later she died. So like we had before, Havlad Rish and Mamza, so the first child of Mamza, because an Easter Karis, living with the wife's sister while she your wife's alive, even if he divorced her, is, is an Easter of Karis, so any children, according to almost everybody, is um, one opinion, but according to everybody, Karis, the children of Mamza, and Va'ache and Mamza, but the children that were born after you, uh, your wife died are not Mamza. Rabbi Yaisi comes along and says, we're going to see a case in the Gemara later on where your wife and your wife's sister's husband, so your wife and your brother-in-law, went overseas. They told, they told your wife's sister that her husband died, and they told you that your wife died. They told that both of them were in a, cra a crash and they died. So therefore, your wife, and then both of them came back. So the, you married then your wife's sister, but, it was your, but your wife came back, and therefore we said nothing happened to your wife's sister. But um, she got married to you, but her husband was still alive. And we learned in the mission that Tate say Mizem is that she can no longer with her husband, husband, your brother -in -law, no longer live with you. So according to Rabbi Yaisi, in that case, because it, it, your relationship with her impacted her life, 
that she can no longer with her husband, then it also impacts your life. You can no longer with your wife. When do we say that you you know if you if you're with your wife's sister and you can live, if she wasn't a married woman, for example, so therefore it doesn't impact at all in her life, you can take your original wife back. But if, it, if she's a married woman and she made the same mistake as you did, and for her it does impact because of this action. If this action impacts on her, it impacts on you as well, and you cannot take your wife back. This is what he says. If you puzzle others, that you ruin their lives, then you're also affected by it, and you cannot take your wife back. When the first part of the mission, where it doesn't, she wasn't married, um, then so on, it doesn't impact her life. Ain't no place in the then your own wife you can take back. Says the Gemara, um, so from the Tanakhama, and this is how we know that's the case, because the Gemara says it, the Afagav, the Oz, the Gishu, the Yam, in the first part of the Mishnah, according to Tanakhama, even if it was your wife and your brother in law who went overseas, the Hani Hanasuyim, and now when they, we thought that both died, and now when they both came back, the, your wife, sister that you live with, she cannot go back to her husband. The Hani Hanasuyim, the fact that you married your wife, sister in that particular case, did affect the Kimitsi ages. Gisa Agisa, it forbids her from going back to her husband. I feel Hachi, nevertheless, Aish is Gisa Asida. And even though that she is forbidden, but the, the, this man can take his original wife back to the Tanakama holds. It doesn't matter that the other woman in this relationship got affected, but you personally not affected at all because you, you know, um, what do you call it? Living with a wife, sister, doesn't ask you taking your wife back. And you are later on, we'll talk. How do we know that? We don't say, we don't follow Rabbi H's reasoning. It said that since she became forbidden to her brother, to her husband, to us, that your own wife should become usher on you. We don't say that at all. So the mother, Lema, let us say that Masnissin, our mission that says you take your original wife back, is does not follow Rabbi Akiva. Why not? Because if Rabbi Akiva, if Rabbi Akiva, um, since you have to give, let's say you were married to your wife's sister, suddenly your wife comes back, you have to give your wife's sister a divorce. But for the reason we said a long time ago that people think that people think that you were never married, that your wife will soon see the Gemara. Well, think you never really married your wife and, uh, and you know, that you're never married and therefore second marriage is a proper marriage. If she walks out without a get, people were going to start thinking, oh, you don't need a divorce. So she needs a divorce. And the moment she's divorced, I would keep us of the opinion that the sister of a divorce, you can never marry. You can never marry the sister of your, the, of, of your divorced wife. So therefore, um, it's only if, if your wife passed away, you can marry a sister, but not if you divorced her. Um, so it's a sister of your divorcee, and I believe you're not allowed to marry her. <clears throat> the Tanya, so you, should know, but you cannot take your wife back anymore because your wife now will be the sister of your divorce, of her of your divorced wife, the other one, the one that you had to divorce, which is her sister. The Tanya will learn. Call out Israel, any of the errors the angels are going to get. You marry your sister, you, there's nothing happens, so you don't even need a divorce. Chutz, the only exception is we had this before. The age is east, an age is east, a married woman. She needs says, I'll be bezin. The bezin told her based on a single testimony of a witness that your husband died, they set her free. And then her husband came back. She needs a divorce from the second person, right, for, for appearance sake. Rabbi Kiva adds, Mois, Av, Aish is Och. Rabbi Kiva adds also the wife of a brother. Um, your, the, your, your brother's wife, you thought your brother died, and so therefore uh, you took his wife, and took, your brother came back, you have to give her a divorce, and achais isha, if you thought your wife died, married her sister, turned out to be that, you, that your wife's alive, you have to give her a divorce. The key one, Dhamma Rabbi Kiva, get, one with Rabbi Kiva says that you have to give a divorce to your wife's sister, then no longer you can take your wife back, because now she's a sister of a divorcee, the havala achais grushos, She's a sister of the divorcee. So obviously the author of our Mishnah is not Rabbi Kiva. That's the first question. Um, Rashi says it's hard to understand why Rabbi Kiva would insist that she needs a divorce if you marry your wife's sister thinking your wife is dead. Uh, Rashi says, time didn't. we don't really know the reason why. What are we worried about? <clears throat> um, because uh, what are people going to say? And maybe the first husband, uh, maybe the, the husband divorced his, uh, his first wife and then he married the second one, but you're not allowed to marry um, your wife's sister as long as your wife is alive. So therefore, nobody's going to think that you married her properly. So why would you need a divorce? So you, it's, actually, it's hard to know why. Anyway, we learned, we'll soon see. I mean, didn't we learn? I'm going to ask this back. But didn't we learn that we qualified these cases of Rabbi Kiva? Didn't we learn? What exactly is the case 
of your you were told that your brother that your brother passed away and if you want to marry his wife what's the case it's talking about a case that only your brother got engaged to a woman this is the case your brother got engaged to a woman not he married her he got engaged the whole of them went overseas this is the case that you need a divorce you thought your brother died you married his wife this is the case you need a divorce that your brother's only engaged her and Vishama Shemay Sakhi, you heard your brother died in the midst of you Mustaq. So Ahmad Vana said you married his wife. The Amin Inji people are going to say, and what happened? He was engaged and now the brother's married. They're going to say, probably what happened was, ha kama to have a condition. They'll say, well, the first person got engaged and he went overseas. But that's odd. Must be they made some kind of a condition. If I'm not back at a certain time, you're free and this condition falls away. So therefore the brother was able to marry. So um have a high shop in us if he married her. So therefore, that's why you need a divorce, because people think it's a legitimate marriage. But in the case where the first brother was married to her and the brother is alive, nobody thought the second brother was a legitimate, legitimate marriage. And what do you need to get for? The only time you need to get is if the first brother is only engaged. So therefore, we can convince ourselves that maybe there was a, 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 a proper marriage. The same thing is So based on that, we're going to say the same thing with the wife's sister. Hey, dummy, not that you were married to um, that you were married to your to, to your wife and then you married her sister. No one will think that uh, it's, it's a legitimate marriage. You only talk, don't need a divorce. You know what? It doesn't make sense. Like we're actually, but we don't have any reason. No, we're talking about is that that you only got engaged to to her sister to to, to this woman and she went overseas. The whole thing is I'm then with Shamash made her she died. Omar with Nasal Khaj didn't marry the sister. So then and then so then people will say the Omni Incha Hach Kamasa to not have a good issue. People will say, oh they'll say the same thing. That the same thing we got engaged and they made a condition that if she's not back at a certain time he's going to uh, the condition unravels. And then he married a sister. So people might think it's a valid marriage. That's why you need to get but stam you don't need to get <clears throat> but when it comes to our mission where you were married to the woman, nobody's going to say, oh, you married a woman, you live together on a certain condition, now that you're not happy, the whole marriage falls apart. Because if you do that, that means all the time you live together, you live in sin. Nobody's going to make that assumption. So therefore, if you were married correctly, and then you married a sister, and again, you turn back up, nobody's going to think, oh, one second, you legitimately married to sister, why don't you have a divorce? Everyone realizes that they weren't married properly. So what do you want? Why, so so why would you uh, need need a divorce? So therefore, our mission could be Rabbi Kiva, and this and the, when he lived with the sister, he doesn't have to give her a divorce. So they're taking you, you can take your wife back because she's not the sister of a divorcee. In this case, you don't have to give her a divorce because no, there's no appearances there. Nobody thought that you were properly married to the to the sister once the, your wife comes back. Do you think by Nasuyan, by marriage we can say to know I have a little bit of suyin or some kind of condition? And of course not. Because if you did, that means all the years you lived together with her, you lived in sin. Nobody thinks that people were going to make such an arrangement. Okay, so the mother still have not happy yet. If the author of our Mishnah is Rabbi Akiva, according to Rabbi Akiva, we should add another case in our Mishnah. You gave me the case of um, of a wife's sister. There's another case. What about the wife's mother, your mother-in-law? Listen, in Nami why don't you mention the wife's mother, the mother law? Because according to Rabbi Akivi, we know that according to us, you're never allowed to marry the mother. There's no instance you're allowed to marry the mother law. So don't talk about it. But Rabbi Akiva holds that you're allowed to marry the mother law if of your, you're allowed to marry your wife's mother if the wife passed away. Just like you're allowed to marry your wife's sister if she passes away, you're allowed to marry the wife's mother. So learn the same story of the wife's mother. You know that you thought that, she, that your wife died, you married her mother, and then she came back. Same still story, but here's another possibility. Why don't we include that? We know that Kiva holds the Chamoise la Chamoise la Besreifa. Rabbi Kiva says that the mother-in-law, after your wife died, there's no longer, um, there's an Avera, you don't get punished. Because the Torah says that if you live with a woman and her mother, if you marry a woman and her mother, the Torah calls it Zimahi, it's a, such an abomination, and they both should get burnt, or by Eishi Sreifu, they both get burnt, and the Pasik says, and it's very important, as we'll soon see, Oisai, him, he gets burnt, but also the Eshen, which normally touches, and them, too. Who are the two? Your wife and your mother and your mother-in-law. So, so this kind of behavior shouldn't continue. However, we're going to have a machleke, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Kiva, how to learn it. The Tanya, so now we're going to prove Rabbi Kiva holds that you're allowed to live with your mother-in-law after your wife passed away. The Tanya, we learned, says, the age Yisraifu, you should burn them in fire. Who's them? Oisoi, you, this guy, and Eshen, and them. So Oisoi, what do you mean by Eshen? What's Eshen? What kind of word is Eshen? So we can tell you, Oisoi, him, there's Achas, man. 
Eser means one of them. This is very interesting. In Hebrew, Eser means them, right? Both of them. But in Greek, Eser is from the word Hina, which means one. And we decided, Mishmol decided, this is very, very interesting, that the Tate here is actually using a Greek word rather than a Hebrew word. And the Tate is saying, kill her. And who's her? Obviously not your wife, because you, you married her illegitimately. It's her mother. Because when you, you after you married your wife, you married her mother, you committed a sin. So only the mother-in-law gets killed. So the, the, the guy gets killed and only the mother-in-law. Fascinating to take the word out of the Hebrew uh, context and make it into, into, turn into a Greek word, and therefore you're changing the outcome that you only kill the mother. This is this is the opinion of Rabbi Shmo. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says no. Oisoi the He says no. Oisoi means eshen. They both they both die. <clears throat> now the question is, the order finds it hard to understand. Why should his wife be punished? You married her legitimately. Why should she be punished? What did she do wrong? You, it should be you and your and her and her mother. What did she do wrong? What's shot? So there's different ways of learning. Abaya and and Rav. Um, so he says here. Um, Abaya says. Bishle, Abaya says. There's no argument here. What what Rabbi Kiva meant was, of course, your wife is innocent. When Habakkuk says, Essen, he says, don't take, make it Greek, make it Hebrew, S and them. But who's them? If you married your wife's mother, in other words, your mother in law, and then her mother, so now you're married to three women. Your wife, you love the family so much, you marry your wife and her mother and her grandmother. So then S and both of them means her mother and her, no, it's S and those people who are living in sin, which is her mother and her grandmother, then they, they get burnt, they get burnt, but not your own wife. So that's all right. So it was a contra baye, but Kiva and Mishmael not arguing. They're just arguing how to understand Pshat and the Posse, whether it's a Greek word or a Hebrew word. And if it's a Hebrew word, it means them plural, it means a mother and a mother, grandmother. But they're not arguing in Halach. However, so a contra baye says, Mashmoy, does you and I, you. So they both in Halach, both hold the same thing. Rabbi Shmoy also have a Chodok, see, Rabbi Shmoy also is talking about one, Rabbi Shmoy also have a Tachi, Esa means both of them. Shapir, then no problem. Then, you know, you can never live with your mother in law. So that's why we don't mention on Mishnah your mother in law. So what if your wife died? Doesn't permit you to marry her mother. El the rubber, rubber says different. Rubber says, uh, what do you call it? According to Rubber's version, it's a big enough minute, halacha. The nachmin is the mother in law after your wife passed away. According to Rabbi Shmuel, he's still forbidden to marry. You know, but no, what do you mean one? One means even there's only one person left in the world. Your wife died, and only your mother's around. It's still it's an issa to marry your mother. According to Rabbi Kiva, S and them, them mean not that they both get punished. If they both of them are alive, that means your wife, and then you and you marry her mother while you're while she's alive, then. Um, uh, what do you call it? You get punished. Not the wife, but the mother-in-law. But if there's no SN, for example, your wife died, if somebody's wife died, then the, um, the mother-in-law does not get punished. So according to Rabbi Hold, that you're allowed to live with it. It sounds like you're allowed to live with your mother-in-law after your wife died. Why don't you mention that case to Mishnah as well? They told him his wife died. Then he married his mother-in-law. Um, At least in Amechamais, he mentioned the mother-in-law. Amale. So he more answers back. You think Rabbi Kiva says you're allowed to live with your mother-in-law after your wife died? He's just saying you don't get the punishment of Sreifa. You don't get punished of Sreifa. You know one never said you're allowed to. Says the Gemara. How come you're allowed to take your original wife back? Why don't we say that it's forbidden to take your original wife back? Why? Because the fact that you live with her sister, forget this whole thing we talk about, but the fact that you live with her sister, that in itself should forbid you from marrying, taking your wife, original wife back. What do you mean? Me did the have is in a similar case, Aisha Shahala Bail Misayam, if a woman, her husband went overseas and then he came back, you're not allowed to go back to your original husband. Why not? Because the fact is that you slept with another man, even though it was an accident, it's not written, not your fault, and, and so on and so forth. But we learned Tate say Mizam is that she can't even go back to the original husband. And so how come she so how come in this case the wife could go back or the husband couldn't go back to his original wife? What's the difference? About Lloyd Dummy, Cacapilla, too. Easter, in the case of the woman, when she, she told her husband died and she married somebody else, the reason why she cannot go back to the first husband is because what would be if a, if a woman commits adultery 
Forget this whole story. She commits adultery on, uh, deliberately. The law is that she cannot live with a person that is adulterer, but nor can she go back to the original husband. So because in the case of the Mazid, you cannot go back to the original husband. So even though it's a shaggy, we say you cannot go back to the original husband. The Mazid has seen him in the rice. She goes with a bond. Since the Mazid would be awesome at trade if she committed adultery, the Mazid, she cannot go back to the original husband. So the bond goes, even though it's a shaggy, you cannot go back to the original husband. But when it comes to Achish Isha, um, when it comes to your wife's sister, the amazed Loyasidim, let's say deliberately he had relations with his wife's sister. He can still live with his original wife, as we'll see later for possible or not, or tomorrow we'll learn for possible or not. So therefore, it's not even amazing he did this Aveda. It's a terrible Aveda, but he can go back to his original wife. He's Beshegig Le Gazer Berabanon. So therefore, Beshegig Le Banon Born Gazer. Okay, we'll stop over here. And we'll continue tomorrow knowing how do you how do you talk to know if you live with your wife's sister the maze you can still take your you still live with the original wife. We'll continue tomorrow.